everybody. It's Tyler here at Western New England. Checking in. 176. Aces high. Already have a win under their belt so far here in Crescendo, but last year at Phenomenal Seasons as well, too. District champions uh, here in New England, as well as division finals as well, too. And you got to take a look at 176, what they are bringing here this year in Crescendo. Phenomenal packaging that we'll be going through. And that's something called a backpack. I guess we'll learn more about what that is as we go through this entire robot. A lot of great things in regards to uh, doing photon vision and other types of sensing as well, too, and how they're getting their feedback. So let's learn more about Aces High and their phenomenal Crescendo robot come up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Jack, let's start up on this rod. Talk to me a little bit more about what you're using for Swerve this year, and then we're going to go into your awesome intake and detail more into that. Okay. Uh, so our Swerve modules are SDS Swerve L4s. They're powered by Kraken X60 motors. And uh, yeah, that's about all. All right, tell me more about your intake. Our intake is uh, powered by a Kraken X60, and uh, it's under the bumper this year because we want to minimize damage on our intake. And we use these two hot dog rollers down here. Uh, they're plexiglass covered in a rubber tube. And then we use these two passive wedges to make sure our note gets centered, ready to get staged through our, uh, the rest of our intake. We also use these two rollers with our inner carriage with a power takeoff. That just ensures that we get the most grip that we can and get it pushed up in here. We also have a laser can up here to, um, to make sure we have a note staged. And our lights will flash whenever we have a note and then they'll turn red when they're staged. Look at your intake so far. Were there any big uh, iterations or changes you made once you kind of got this under the bumper going? So at first, we were having a lot of trouble finding the right compression to uh, successfully take in the intake and we found that it would always get caught on this rail right here. So we implemented this little wedge with some low friction tape. And that's how we came up with our intake that we have right now. Let's pass over to Anthony who's going to be talking about, uh, you got a cool custom gearbox that we want to run through. And then we're going to be hopping into your elevator as well. So tell me more about it. Absolutely. So, Jack, if you could prop up the superstructure, that'd be great. Yeah, so as you can see down here, we actually have a custom gearbox on either side, and it is powered by two Kraken X60 motors. Th this gearbox is actually connected by a hex shaft that goes all the way across to give it optimal power and balance. So we have this connected up to a chain drive, which is similar to the one on our 2023 robot, which we use to control the degrees of freedom on the arm. Um, Aiden will talk a little bit about the chains as well. So now I'd like to move on to the rest of the superstructure, and especially our climbing system as of right now. Jack, if you could put it in climbing, that would be great. So as you'll see, we have an elevator on here. So whenever we want to go to climb, the elevator will just lift up like this. And the PTO Jack was talking about, which is it connects to this using 10 DP gears, which allows the elevator to come down and mesh together. And then, uh, so it'll power this when we need it down. And when it separates, we don't have to power it anymore. This eliminates the need for an extra motor down here as we only use the motor up here, which drives the entire feeder assembly. Once the note is in the feeder, it is detected using a proximity sensor, um, and then it is passed on to the shooter when it is ready to do so. For our shooter, you can bring it back down if you'd like. Um, our shooter, it is able to rev up nice and quickly. We actually have a four roller mechanism instead of a two roller mechanism. It's still, it's still a flywheel, but we noticed that four rollers produces a little bit more accuracy during our testing phases, and so we went with that system in order to keep everything straight. Let's bring Casey on to talk about, from a shooter perspective on here, is there anything else that you want to talk about in regards to like your choice of wheels or how you get spin or anything like that as well? Sure, so what we have here is we have um, custom wheel hubs that were actually made in our shop by our students, um, and we have the pulleys that help spin the wheels. When we were prototyping with the shooter, 
We mainly were playing with the amount of spacing between the rollers um, and to really get it, get it so that the note would shoot quickly and efficiently into the speaker and the amp and everything. Um, we, it is powered by a um, Kraken X60, which helps it to really go really fastly and it makes our um, cycle times way more efficient. A lot of teams that I've uh, talked to or interviewed that when we see what their roller system looks like or, their, or the wheel system looks like, they don't tend to have like two layers like you do. Like you're like too wide and too deep as well too. Yeah. Can you just talk about that decision process and why it's worked out so well for you? So when we were prototyping, we had a shooter prototype with only one roller on the top and the bottom, which we found would um, have it go shooting at an angle and it didn't go as straight as we wanted it to. So the extra rollers on um, both the top and the bottom really helped to straighten it out as we were making our shoot shots and aiming for the speaker. Our robot has uh, a roller on two separate motors for each side of the shooter. Uh, so this helps with our targeting system because we can put spin on the, uh, on the ring by only having one side of it spinning at a time. So to target, we use uh, photon vision to see the the April tags, just so we know how far away we are. We pass that data through a common filter so we can get more accurate data of where we are in the field. This allows us to then use a lookup table to tell what angle the arm should be at for our current position and how fast our shooters on either side of the, our rollers on either side of the shooter should be spinning at this at that point to get the note in. A couple other things, we gotta uh, determine what this backpack is here. So uh, let's bring Aiden on to talk more about what, what is the backpack actually. I know we've talked a little bit about the elevator area, the shooter area and stuff. What, what is the actual backpack on this robot? Detail it for me. So our backpack here is just something that flips up so we can score in the amp and soon to be trap. So if he, he's gonna show you here quickly. So no goes in, it gets staged, and then the pivot comes back. And you can see this part up here, it comes up by a Neo 550, which is contacting herringbone gears. So we get the most contact between the gears. We started off with regular like regular gears and we realized that there was a lot of skipping with the teeth and it would get out of position a lot. So we were like, we need more contact, we need more layers to be connected. So we decided to add the herringbone gears to contact it more. And then also with our backpack, we started out with Mark Forge 3D printed um, arms here, which actually control the movement back and forth but they kept shearing the heck shaft, kept shearing out the inside. So we custom made these things, these uh, arms in our house that you can see. They have our logo on them and they're, they're out of aluminum so they're a lot stronger and more durable. Something that we got, I gotta ask you about, you said uh, trap soon. What, so what does that mean exactly? What modifications are you gonna make in order to do the trap? So right now, our, we don't have a trap because we haven't found, a, well we have a way, we just haven't been able to implement a way that we can get high enough up onto the chain so that the backpack can actually reach the trap. So we're very close in some spots, but it's just trying to make it faster so that's more effective. Right now we're figuring out like, it's not as effective for us to go for a trap when we can just score three more cycles or two more cycles and get the same amount of points. So that's, that's our soon to be trap. Hey, we look forward to seeing that as well. So your team has done so well so far that you haven't really needed it, but of course, you know, going to the district championships, yeah. that might be something you need as well. Uh, Nora, let's talk about on here, you got a couple other great things from a software side, uh, both the uh, LEDs to talk a little about, and uh, run me through some of your different state machines, what you're doing for that. Yeah, so we have obviously a bunch of different subsystems on here, and there are a lot of different states that we can be in. So that could be either just intaking, shooting, birdie feeder, climbing, hanging, whatever it is. So we have like a superstructure subsystem that manages all of those states, as well as a separate state machine with all of the different shooter states and the intaking states. And depending on those states, we kind of have the robot do different things. We also have some sensors in here on the feeder that detects when a note comes through. It tells us what state like we can be in. And it also uh, changes the lights to reflect that. So if we have a note staged, the lights will turn on to let the drivers know um, what's going on. We also have an extra limelight over here because as Andrew mentioned before, we use photon vision, but in case something happened with that, if we were to lose connection, it would fall back on the limelight. And overall, from anything else on your different states, like when you were programming your robot, 
and looking at like how you're going to score in these different positions, stuff like that. Can you just walk me through that process of like what kind of testing did you do to get your states to where they are? Because you're so accurate on the field on pretty much anything you do right now. Yeah, so we did a lot of testing. I mean, we had, for example, for like the birdie feeder, when we feed from the shooter in case the intake breaks, um, we just kind of tested the set point for that. We have set points for all our different modes. And when you hit a certain button on the controller, it'll set it to a certain mode. And that mode then knows like what to do. So if we set it in shooting mode, it makes sure that the elevator is in. That way we're not like hitting anything. So do you want to put it in like, let's say climbing mode. So when Jack hits this button, it goes into climbing mode. So right now the state machine, it's in a climb mode. When he hits another button, it goes up. It's still in climb mode. And then he can hit something else that brings it to hanging mode. So at this point, it'll go back down and then turn over. OK, wrong button. But yeah, it'll flip over. And then while in that state, in hanging mode, it's constantly checking that the arm is at the like 35 degrees or whatever it is to stay here and make sure the robot doesn't fall off the chain. Well, 176 Aces I congratulations on a phenomenal season so far. We can't wait to see, of course, how you do here at Western New England and throughout the rest of the season as well. So thanks a lot. I think teams are going to learn a lot from this robot. So thanks for showing us more, and good luck the rest of the way. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.